to those who's watching us on the internet, same to you. Good afternoon and peace on the Sabbath. Y'all know me. I'm his brother Zachariah. You know me now if you didn't. This is my reader, brother uh, Allen. And uh, today's lesson is dealing with death and life is in the power of the tongue. I'm going to tell you something. I, I asked my elder brother, Daniel, could I give this lesson? Uh, and the reason why I asked him, because of things that I have heard and things that I, I have been told. And I'm going to tell you all something. I'm the last one on the list to try and correct anybody, and that's the truth. But from time to time, we need to be reminded of the things that we're supposed to be doing and also of what's supposed to be coming out of our mouth. Because it's just like the Psalms the Brother read. He that hold this conversation up rightly is going to get into the kingdom. And we need to understand this. Uh, you know, a lot of times I, I just look at I think maybe a person don't understand. Because like I said, I, I'm not into correcting people. You'll say something to do something, and I ain't got nothing to say. And, and I'll see you, i like, well, you grown. The focus is on me. I'm, I'm truly serious. I, I keep the focus on me. Hoping God will forgive me for some of my foolishness. But I thought this was necessary, so I'll make sure y'all to bear with me, and hopefully this will go right. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. You know, it's, it's not hard to refrain from keeping from, keeping from adultery or fornication. It's not hard not to do them things. It's not hard not to steal. And, and to come here every Sabbath and to keep the Sabbath and, and to honor the Lord's Sabbath, doing these things ain't hard. But it's very difficult to get this tongue in control. That's the hard thing, I'm going to tell you, because all of us didn't open our mouth and let something come out of our mouth that shouldn't be. Yeah. So that's what this lesson is all about, and that's what we're going to deal with, and hopefully we'll get some understanding out of this, and we're going to get right to it. We're going to open this up in St. Matthew 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10, Matthew 5 and 10. Now, here in Matthew, they, they come to Jesus telling him about, I mean, I'm sorry, 15. My, my mistakes. I'm starting off wrong. Play Matthew 15 in verse 10. They come to Jesus telling him about his disciples eating bread without washed hands. You know, but the Lord let them know it's something that's way more important than eating bread without washed hands. You know, I just want uh, verse 10, St. Matthew 5 and 10. Go ahead, brother. 15 and 10. Go ahead. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So this is what Jesus wanted to know. Something far more important than about eating bread without wash hands. That don't matter. It's what's coming out. This is what makes you unclean before God. This is what makes you unacceptable before God, what comes out of your mouth. We have to be very careful before we open his mouth. We need to think. And as we get into this lesson, we're going to find out that you should open your mouth as few as possible. It's best to keep this tongue closed. I'm telling you, keep the mouth closed. And we're going to find this out. Let's go further. Let's go over now to James. I just want to open up with that. We're going to get right to it because James break this thing down for us totally. Let's go to James chapter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because I'm no different than anybody else. I open my mouth and some come out of it. And no sooner as some come out of it, I'll be like, you know you shouldn't have said that. Can't even get it out good. My conscience be like, you know you shouldn't have said that. So we have to work on it. We want to get into kingdom. We have to work on it. And you got to know your shortcomings, and you have to work on it. You know, you can't know it. You have to know what your shortcomings are, and you got to work on them shortcomings. Uh, James 3, we're going to pick this up at verse 1, because like I said, James breaks this down for us totally. Go ahead, brother. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Mm -hmm. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. You see what James said? If you don't offend in word, you're a perfect man, and you're able to bridle the whole body. You, you got, you got, now you got self-control. Controlling his mouth is very important. You can control that. You can control anything. And you will get into God's kingdom. Keep going. Three, 
Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Ain't that the truth? You see them ships, they big as a football field, but it's a small little rudder that guides it. Well, James is showing you something naturally that you can, he can compare to the same thing with your tongue. It's the smallest member you got. But it's the dangerous, most dangerous member you got too. Keep going. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindle. You see that? How great a matter a little fire kindle? A little fire get you into that lake. Remember this. Go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defile the whole body. Well, ain't that what Jesus told us? It's not that which go of in, but that's what coming out that defile a man. It's the tongue that defiles the body. It's the tongue that makes you unacceptable. It's the tongue that makes you unclean before God. Keep going. And setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Of every kind of beast, and of bird, and of serpent, and of things in the sea, is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. Ain't that the truth? We see that every day. You got the animal shows where they got the lion tamed and the tiger tamed. You go to SeaWorld and they riding on the dolphins and the, and the whales, <laughs> you know, making them do tricks. Yeah. Man, and, you named it, man, and tamed it. But one thing, keep going. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. You see that? The tongue is an unruly evil is what? Full of deadly poison. No man can tame it. I told you, it's not, it's not hard to come here and keep the Sabbath. It's not hard not to go out and commit adultery and fornication. But taming his tongue, that's the problem. Because I, it would be a shame that we come here every Sabbath and we keep the Sabbath and we labor and we labor for the feast and we do work around the church and we do all these other things, but we don't get this tongue in check and stand before God. And he said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Because you did not get this tongue in check. You got to check this tongue. We all got to check. Now, that go for me, too. No, I'm not just talking to y'all. Because the book of Paul said, when you teach another, you teach yourself as well. So I'm, I'm listening to, to what's being read. Because I got some checking to do myself. You know? Keep going. Nine. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we man which are made after the similitude of God. Now, ain't that something? We're going to bless God. We come here, praise the Lord, give each other a kiss and a hug. How you doing today? May God be with you. Then turn around. Boy, I'm telling you, I don't like that so-and-so, so-and-so. You know what that person is, and this person that, and that person that, making statements and, and accusations and things against people, stuff coming out of our mouth against somebody else that shouldn't be. If you don't like a person, you're not going to love everybody. I mean, you're not going to get along with everybody. You don't like a person, you don't like them. Keep your mouth quiet. Don't say nothing against them. Amen. You know that saying go, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all? Yes, sir. That's true. Yes, sir. It's best not to say nothing at all. Mm. Finish that up. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not so be. You see what he say? These things are not to be. We shouldn't bless in one hand and curse on the other hand. You shouldn't have nothing ought to say against your brother in one, one breath, then you blessing in the other breath. That don't go together. It ain't supposed to be like that. Go ahead. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Do it. If you go to a water fountain and you get a drink of it and the water ain't no good, you ain't going back to it. You ain't going to turn around and get five minutes later and say, well, let me go to try this again. You know the water ain't no good there. It ain't going to be no good when you go back. So it shouldn't be. Read that next verse. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. And that's how it's supposed to be with us. See, blessing and cursing should not come out of our mouth. It's one or the other. Which one you gonna be? You can't it can't be both. It has to be one or the other. I want y'all, I want to take a look at something. Turn over to Jude. Show you something here that we should. We coming back to James. We ain't through with James, but I want to turn over to Jude real quick. Jude is that little book right before Revelations, and I want you to read verse eight. 
Jude in verse 8, 8 and 9. Give me everybody a second to get there. Go ahead. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Mm -hmm. Yet Micah, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. You pay attention to that? Even Michael, the captain of the Lord's host, Disputing with Satan, he didn't even, he was afraid to bring a railing accusation against the devil. He didn't say, you old low-down, dirty devil. No, the Lord rebuked thee. And this is the captain of the Lord host, an angel. In dispute with Satan, who we know going to the fire, because the fire was created for him. We ought to be the same. We ought to be afraid to bring, make certain statements and to bring accusations or to say something against somebody else. Don't do it. Even if it's, even if it's right, don't do it. Don't do it. Let's go further. Let's go back to James. I'm going to pick it up at James 1. James first chapter, and we're going to pick this up at verse 19, James 1 and 19. When you get there, go ahead, brother. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And we know it don't, because usually when you get upset or mad, you usually do something you shouldn't do. So be slow to wrath. Don't be quick to get angry. You're right. I didn't done that before too. I ain't, I, I'm guilty of that too, because it's not part of my general conversation. But we're gonna deal with that too. But then you be slow to wrath. Don't be quick to get angry. If you got an anger problem, work on it, because I'm gonna tell you something. It will keep you from God's kingdom, and that's what this is all about: getting in God's kingdom. I don't know nobody else, but this is serious to me. I take this very serious. I really do. I take this very serious. Because I want to get there because I know this is real. Amen. And I want to be there. And it takes all that you got that's in you and then some to get this right and to do it right. right. Remember the Lord said the righteous are scarcely saved. Wow. Okay. Scarcely saved. So don't think you're going to waltz into the kingdom. Yeah. You have to do all you can to make it. Right. And then you're still going to be hoping. That's right. wow. that's right. that's right. Keep going. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. There's excess of naughtiness. Go ahead. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Because mm -hmm, if you follow this word, it will save you, bro. Go ahead. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And you get that be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Just don't hear this word. Apply it in your life, in your daily life. You come here on the Sabbath to get this word now. When you leave here, go out and apply it in your daily life. In everything you do, keep the word up front and apply it. Because that's why you come here. You come here to learn this word, how to save yourself. That's the only purpose from coming here. Other than that, why come? Now go out and apply it in your daily life. Don't be just a here. Don't just, ooh, that word sound, because it do sound good. But this is a double-edged sword, remember? Now go out and apply it to your life. Practice. Practice. And then it becomes easy if you practice it. Then it's like a habit. You're doing it without thinking. Go ahead. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Mm -hmm. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Go ahead. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. You see what James say? If any among you seem to be religious, but you don't what? Don't bridle that tongue, your religion is vain. I mean, you're doing this for nothing. Mm. 
you can't check that tongue, everything you do is in vain. Because that tongue will get you cut off. Check the tongue. Watch your conversation. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Because we're going to give an answer. Don't think you ain't. All that stuff that you didn't open your mouth and let go, oh, you're going to answer for it. Mm. Me, you, and everybody else, we shall surely answer for it. So be careful what you, let you, what you let come out your mouth. Let's go further. Let's go to Psalms 52. I'm going to just go over here. And just, I said we're just going to take a look and see what the book has to say about the things that should come out our mouth and things that shouldn't come out our mouth. Because we need to know both sides. We need to know what should come out of our mouth. And we're going to get to that. Right now, we're going to deal on what we shouldn't say. We're going to get to what we should say and what's pleasing to God. Go to some of these Proverbs and Psalms. The Lord had these wise men to write. Psalms 52, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 52 and 1. Give everybody a second to get there. All right, go ahead, Brother Allen. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? In the, good, the goodness of God endureth continually. Mm -hmm. Thy tongue deviseth mischief, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You said the tongue devises what? Mischief. mischief. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully. I, I, I got some definitions here because we need to understand. We know what things are, but I just want to read a couple of things to you so we can be clear on a lot of things. Sometimes we read something. We need to understand what words mean. Read mischief. Just read it. Mischief, a cause or source of harm, evil, or annoyance, an injury, or evil caused by a person, harm or trouble. You can yes, do sir. what? Yes, cause sir. harm with your tongue. Oh, yes, you can. Mischief. The tongue working mischief is causing harm. It's causing trouble, annoyance. <laughs> Keep going. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, say lie. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Wait a minute, say thou lovest what? All, all devouring, devouring words. words. You know them words, them hurtful words, them mean words, them words that tear down and don't build up. Because you know words can build as well as tear down. But them devouring words, them words that tear down that hurt people. Say the tongue loved them words. And you know the tongue do. Love it when you say that hateful stuff. Ooh. Feels good to the mouth. Wow. Them hurtful words because somebody didn't hurt you, so now you finna hurt somebody. I want to take a look at something. Let's, let's turn over to Proverbs 12 real quick. Because he said them, them devouring words, them hurtful words on the... Proverbs 12, and I just want one verse, verse 18. 12 and 18. Read it, brother. There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. You see that? There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. You know the devouring words that you use? I see it all the time. People use divine words. You got a man and a woman. He don't abuse his woman physically, but he abuses her verbally. Everything come out of his mouth is negative to her. It tears down her self-esteem. And it gets to a point where she believes this foolishness that comes out of his mouth. And she thinks she deserves it. So she no longer fixes herself up to look good. She no longer, uh, uh, when he touches her, she no longer responds to his touch anymore. So now he's going to get him somebody else. But he done broke this woman down with his words. He destroyed her emotionally. I didn't see women do it to men. Everything come out of her mouth is negative towards her man. Nothing encouraging, nothing to build him up. Slowly she chipping away at his manhood until the bottle was his best friend. Now she finna go out and get her a real man because he weak. But you done broke this man down with your words. Them devouring words we just read about. This is emotional pain here. You might well take a sword and probably be more merciful if you took a sword and just stabbed him through. The Lord ain't pleased with that. 
And people think they're going to walk into the kingdom behind that. It ain't happening. I see people out here do with their children. Every time they open their mouth, they're hollering and screaming at their children, cursing them out like ain't no tomorrow. Then you got the child, the child either reverts inside and becomes timid, and you look at him, what's wrong with him? He all timid. Or the child do the other thing and act out and becomes bad and be, or disobedient. Now you're looking at the child, ooh, that's a bad child. Ain't nothing I can do with him. It ain't the child, it's you. The Lord told you don't provoke your children. Mm -hmm. But you didn't destroy this child emotionally. Child children don't know how to, how to deal with emotional pain. But with your words, you done done all this with your words. You ain't laid a hand on nobody. You didn't open your mouth and let these devouring words come out. You didn't let this poison come forth out your mouth. Now you think you're going to walk into God's kingdom. It ain't happening. Let's go further. Let's go down to, uh, back to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 12. Yeah, people, we, we, we really got to get a handle on this tongue. I'm not a good talker. I don't like talking. I don't talk much. I, I don't. You ask the brothers who go on the road with me. Most of the trip, I, I'm quiet. A lot of times, I go to sleep. I've never been a good talker. <laughs> it's the word. And thank the Lord of that. Jesus name. But like I said, you know, we're going to read. And like I say, you know, the more understanding I get, the more I realize to keep my mouth quiet. You know, because, you know, some people are uncomfortable with that awkward quietness. It don't bother me. It, it don't. It don't bother me. You can sit with me for an hour and I won't say nothing. <laughs> you be like, what's wrong with him? Nothing. I just ain't got nothing to say. I really don't. I don't have nothing to say. What we at? I said, what Psalms uh, 12? Psalms 12, verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Help. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. It ain't the truth. Look out here. Where is the godly? Where is the faithful? Look at this world. It ain't out here, is it? There ain't no godly. It's hard to find a godly person. You don't know how blessed you are to be around these brothers and sisters. Because a lot of people, you're around somebody always trying to do something. You ain't comfortable. You got to watch yourself. You can't trust nobody. Because everybody got their own agendas. <laughs> you can be around these brothers and sisters. You can be comfortable, relaxed. You don't have to worry about nobody trying to do nothing to you use you or abuse you, that's good. That is really good. Because out here in the world, it ain't like that. And you know how it is. Even It's like sometimes amongst your own family, you got places amongst your own family that you can't trust them. Mm -hmm. And every time you see them, you know they're up to no good. So, yeah, it's good. you don't realize you're blessed being around these brothers and sisters that's trying to do what's right. Keep going. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart. They do do they speak? Watch the flattering lips. Watch the person that come to you with the flattering lips. They got an agenda, and God do not like the flattering lips because that has a, a, a agenda. It's something they want out of you, something they want from you. They want to use you or take advantage of you in some kind of way. That's why they come to you with flattery. Build you up, catch you off guard, make you feel good. Watch them flattering lips. And don't you have a flattering lip? Go ahead. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. And the tongue, because the Lord do not like pride. Pride before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. What you got to be proud of? We ain't nothing but dirt. We ain't done nothing. Whatever the accomplishments you get made in life, hey, thank God that he allows you to do it. That's right. That's right. And you're going to return to the dirt, so you ain't got nothing to be proud of. You finished that? 
Yes, sir. All right, let's go a little bit further then. Let's go. Uh, Starting forward. No, this that's good. You finish read first. Well, go ahead, read first. You uh, finished four, didn't you? No. Go no. read it then. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? You see that? Our lips are our own. I heard a lot of people tell you, you can't tell me what to say. No, I can't. But your mouth don't belong to you. The Lord belongs to God, and he's going to show you. Because a lot of people open their mouth and say things, think they just free to say whatever they want to say. No, you ain't. You are not free to say what you want to say. You are not allowed to open your mouth and just let anything and everything come out of it. I know we think we are, but you're going to answer for it. Be careful. Like they say, they say our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? People tell you that all the time. I can say what I want to say. You can't tell me what to say. No, I can't, but the Lord can. And he's going to deal with you for opening your mouth and saying what you said. Let's go further. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 10. I said we're just going to browse through and just hit a few scriptures here and there and just see what the book say. I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to come down on nobody because I'm not. I just want us all to learn and get it together. That's what I want. I need to get this together just like everybody else. We need to get ourselves together. Sometimes we don't realize that we're doing something that's not correct. So when we find out, then, hey, let us correct ourselves. Proverbs 10. We're going to pick this up at verse 11. Go ahead, brother. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. He said the mouth of the righteous man is a what? A well, well of life. life. And that's what you're supposed to be about. Us as being, trying to be children of life, our mouth's supposed to be a well of life. When you open your mouth, wisdom and knowledge are supposed to come out of it. Now, I know that's not the case all the time, because we are men. But still, that's what we're supposed to be striving for. We're supposed to be striving to get to the point that when we open our mouth, wisdom and knowledge come out of it. It's supposed to be a well of life. That means the word is supposed to come out of it, because the word is life. This is what we're supposed to be striving for. This is what we're supposed to be trying to obtain. Keep going. Hatred stirreth up stripes, but love covereth all sins. Mm, remember that. Love covereth all sins, and it truly do. The book told us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So love do cover all sins. Keep going. 13. The lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Mm -hmm. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Skip on down now to verse uh, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof error. Mm -hmm. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. You see that? He that do what? Hide of hatred, hatred with lying lips, and he the other slander of a fool. Say, if you got a problem with somebody, go talk to them. Y'all sit down. I mean, we are, are grown. We are adults. We should be able to sit down and work it out. And if nothing else comes to agreement, well, you know what? It's best that we just keep our distance then. But you don't pretend. Don't pretend you like somebody and you really don't. Don't pretend that you don't have a problem with somebody. Work it out. Sit down. You never know. You, the person you sit down with and y'all work it out, y'all might become the best of friends. So don't hide it. You're supposed to sit down and you're supposed to work it out. And like I said, if nothing else, you come to agreement, well, you know what? It's best that you keep your distance and I keep my distance. Hello, and that's it. But at least you didn't got rid of that feeling that you got inside. Right. Now you can see the person without, you know, maybe wanting to do something or say something. Keep going. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not, there wanteth not sin. Oh, wait a minute. And see, read that again. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. You like to talk a lot? Remember that. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. If you talking all the time, sin is there. That's what the book said. I ain't saying it. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. You know somebody always running off at the mouth? Sin is there. Because like I say, what is there really that much to talk about? <laughs> that's what's going to That's what you're going to do. 
you're going to be running off in the mouth, running off in the mouth, and you're going to be lying and everything else. A whole lot of stuff is going to come out that shouldn't come out. So in the multitude of words, one not saying, let your words be few. And the book going to tell us that too. I knew a brother and some of us who go way back with me. You know, a brother could talk you to sleep and you wake up, he still be talking. <laughs> and that is not an exaggeration. That is the honest truth. You be sitting there, and the brother, I never met a brother in my life talk that much. You be sitting there and he be talking. And when you are doze off, when you wake up, he still be sitting there talking. And ain't nobody in the room but you and him. And that is no exaggeration. That is the honest truth. Where we at, brother? Uh, end of 19. Keep going. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. So you want to know a wise man? A wise man is one that refrain his lips. Keep going. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little work. Mm -hmm. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for one of wisdom. And fools die for one of wisdom, but the lips of the righteous do what? Feed Amen. many. Because the lips of the righteous disperse life. When you open your mouth, you disperse the knowledge and understanding. God's word, which is life. That's why the lips of the righteous feed many, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to feed people. We're supposed to feed people understanding and knowledge. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. Skip on down, brother, to verse 31. The mouth of the oh. Just at verse 31. Go ahead. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. He said the forward tongue. That's the backwards tongue, perverse tongue. I got a definition on forward too. We read what that means. Because like I said, sometimes you read these words and be like, well, I'm going to find out what these words exactly mean. So, you know, we can get an understanding on it. They're going to read what forward means. Forward, obstinate, willful, disobedient, fractious, wayward, unmanageable, difficult. So you know what the forward mouth is. That's one that's disobedient, willful disobedient, fractured, unmanageable. I know you don't heard many people like that. I didn't count them. I know some. Unmanageable, mouth is unmanageable, willful disobedient, don't care about nothing. You read that uh, 32. The, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Let's go further now. Let's go uh, to Psalms 34. So we just, like I said, I'm just picking up a few things here and there and these, these wise sayings here and then just let's take a look at it. That's all I'm saying. Psalms 34, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Thirty-four and eleven. Okay, go ahead, brother Allen. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Mm -hmm. Depart from evil and do good. See peace and pursue it. Wait a minute. So he said, if you love life and you want to see many days, he said, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Don't speak deceit. Don't speak lies. You know what I'm All that devouring words, all that hateful stuff, keep that out your mouth. It's not worth it. We're about trying to gain life. This is what we're about. So we got to start by controlling this tongue. Because like the book said, hey, he, that can, he that, that can bridle his tongue is the perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. The Lord keep telling you, if you want life, Get that tongue in check. Get it in check. Because if you can get that tongue in check, you, can, you have self-control. You can control anything. You can keep yourself from doing other things that ain't right. And you will see the kingdom. Where we at, brother? Starting 15. Go ahead. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and in his ears are open unto their cry. That's good. Let's go now to uh, Leviticus 19. Something else we 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 finna deal with. That we need to 
need to get ourselves in check with. Leviticus 19, we're going to pick this up at 16. I just want that one verse, 19 and 16. All right, go ahead. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer. You know what a talebearer is. That's, that's gossip. We have to stay away from that. We should not go down. Read, 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 read talebearer so we can get an understanding amongst that. Talebearer. Just read it. A person who spreads gossip, secrets, etc., that may cause trouble or harm, one who spreads malicious stories or gossip. Now, you notice it says a person that spread gossip or secrets. Let me tell you something. You don't have to not only spread something malicious or a lie, but you can be telling the truth and be a talebearer. Everything you're saying about this person is right, but you're spreading gossip. You tell Baron, what good are you doing? For what? You ain't, do, you ain't helping nothing. So why spread it? The Lord, don't, he said, don't go among your people being a tell burial. You don't tell nobody secrets. So if you find out something or somebody confide in you, something personal and deep, now you run out and you tell it. For what? What good have you done? You, if you got a problem with gossiping, work on it. Leave the circle. Tell them, I, you know, no, I'm trying to stay away from that. Because you're trying to save you. The Lord don't like it. And it ought not be. Keep your mouth quiet, whatever you find out. Keep it to yourself. You ain't doing no good by spreading it. You really ain't. We're going to take a look at this. This is to tell you something, why Lord, I don't want you to tell Baron. Go to Proverbs 11. Because <laughs> that's, see, that's not, not to be amongst us. Do me a favor. Go to Proverbs 18, then we'll come back to 11. Go back to 18, then we'll come back to 11. Proverbs 18 and verse 8. 18 and 8. Go ahead, brother. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. You see that? That's why, Lord, I want you to tell Barry, because you hurt whoever you gossiping about. It's like wounds, and they go down to the belly. You hurting people. You hurting the one that you gossiping about, and you bringing other people into this foolishness. That's why I don't want you to tell Barry, because like I said, what like I said, what good are you doing? You're not helping the situation. Whatever you find out, be it true or whatever, just keep it to yourself. Person find out you done went and told something or said this about him, you don't hurt that person. Now they come to you, they hurt. Because of what you said. Then they find out you just spread it everywhere. How would you feel? Consider yourself. How would you feel? We all been victims of it before. And you know it have hurt at you. Refrain from that. I want to take a look at something. We're going to skip Proverbs 18. I want to go to Numbers 12 because I want to read something here because the Lord always got examples. And I'm going to say this. Even if a person err, and you find out a person err, you still keep it to yourself. Shut your mouth. You don't go around and, and tell everybody. You don't go around and gossip about it. Because... I'm going to tell you something else. Sometimes things is not always what they appear to be. And sometimes you don't know the whole story. Because it's been a many times I thought I knew the whole story and found out I was way off base. Now you just spread to something and you find out, oops, 
It wasn't nothing what I thought it was. Don't do it. We're going to go to Numbers 12, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1, because the Lord always gives us examples about different things. Numbers 12 and 1. Go ahead, brother. And Miriam Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now Moses crossed the line. He married the Ethiopian, and the Lord told Israel, we ain't supposed to marry outside of Israel. So Moses stepped over the line, but Mary and, and, and Aaron did something they wasn't supposed to do either. Go ahead. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. And the Lord heard their words. Now they's talking against Moses. They gossiping. They tell Baron. They spreading it. Instead of keeping their mouth quiet and say, Oh, Moses just stepped out of line. Well, that's between Moses and the Lord. There you go, Preach. But now they just stepped out the line because they went and talking about it. Now they're talking about Moses. Mm -hmm. You know what Moses did? Yeah. Yeah, I know what Moses did. Well, who Moses think he is? The point I'm trying to get you to see, they should have kept it quiet. They should have shut their mouths. Because I'm going to tell you something, the Lord knows how to deal with anybody that step out of line. He know how to do it. You look up, hey, person they have problems at home, ain't no peace in the house. What they was doing for fine on the job, now they got problems on the job. The Lord know how to deal with those who step out across the line. Yes, sir. Read that some more, brother. Starting three. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Yes. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all mm. mine house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even Ooh. apparently, and mm. not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The Lord, they said, you wasn't even afraid to speak against my servant Moses. Like we read in Jude, Michael the archangel was afraid to bring an accusation against the devil. He just said, the Lord rebuked thee. These are examples for us. We look at the prince of the Lord's host, the captain of the Lord's host. He won't even bring an accusation against Satan and the devil. Mary and, 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 and Aaron here now, they're speaking out against Moses. The Lord say, okay, I'm going to deal with y'all for that. The point is, don't spread it around. Keep your mouth quiet. Let God, God know how to deal with everybody. Don't get yourself in trouble. Just that simple. Like I told y'all earlier, I, I'm, I'm sitting when I say, hey, I'm not about trying to correct nobody because I keep the focus on me, and I do. I see you do something, that's you. I ain't going to come to you, brother and sister, right now because I'm all about focus on me. The book says seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And believe me, I'm, that's what I'm about. I take that serious. I'm not about trying to chase up behind nobody, trying to correct them and tell them what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing. Because I'm hoping God will forgive me of my shortcomings, and I got too much. Too much. Let's go over to Galatians 6. If you are going to say something or you got something to say or you want to deal with it, do it this way. This way you stay within the boundaries of the Lord's law. Galatians 6. And pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in faults, which ye are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So that's how you're supposed to do it. If a brother or someone be overtaken in a fault, then you're supposed to go to him in the spirit of meekness with the word and restore such a one. If you ain't going to do it that way, keep your mouth quiet and keep on about your business. And that's the way it is. 
lest you also be tempted. We all flesh, and we all can fall. So if you ain't going to do it according to the way the Lord said do it, keep your mouth quiet. Don't spread it around. Don't gossip about it. Leave it alone. That's good enough. Let's go to Proverbs 26. One more thing on, 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 on the tail bearer, and then we're going to go further. Proverbs 26 and verse 20. Twenty-six and twenty. Go ahead, brother. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the stripes ceases. See that? Wow. <laughs> you know how they say don't add don't add wood to the fire. The book tell you where there's no wood is, the fire goeth out. So where there's no, no tail bearer, the strife ceases. Cause you see all the problem the tail bearer and the gossiping cause, strife, contention, mm -hmm. hurt, pain. All that. And the Lord tell us, he said, we're supposed to love one another. And love work of no ill. So why are you going to bring that pain and hurt to somebody? When you can just keep your mouth quiet. It ain't going to hurt you. I know it's hard to do sometimes. I ain't no different than nobody else. I like to hear a good rumor. I like to hear it. I ain't no different than nobody. I ain't going to sit up and pretend like I'm different. I like to hear the good rumors and stories, too. But I'm trying to get into the kingdom. So I'm going to ask you, please take it to somebody else. Because I'm not with it. Like I told you, I don't like talking a lot anyway. And I'm to myself. And I thank God he do let me be kind of a drifter, a loner to myself. Because it keeps me out of a lot of mess. It really do. I see all my brothers and sisters in here, but I hang with hardly nobody. Well, hardly anybody. Me and that brother live down the street from each other, and he'll tell you he hardly ever see me. <laughs> the only time we see each other is basically here at class, and we ain't number but a block apart. I go home and I chill out in my house by myself, peacefully. <laughs> and that is the truth. You finished there? Uh, yes, sir. At twenty-one. Go ahead. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Read that 22nd verse. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. That's good. Now we're going to deal with something else. Let's go to Numbers 30. We're going to deal with, with vows and commitments and promises. Because that's something else that we need to understand about opening our mouths and making vows and promises and commitments. Because I'm going to tell you something. You, don't, you know, everybody understand about a vow, but a promise is the same thing. Or a personal commitment. You make a personal commitment, God looking for you to keep it. He really is. So don't make no personal commitments or no promises, and you ain't got no intentions on keeping them. Before we get started, I want you to read vow. Vow. A solemn promise, pledge, or personal commitment. Mm -hmm. A solemn promise made to a deity or a saint committing itself to an act, or service, or condition. To dedicate or devote by a vow to vow oneself to the service of God. Mm -hmm. Vow oneself to the service of God. When we got baptized, we done that. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes you did. Yes, when we did, we're in that water, you vowed yourself to the service of God. Now we're going to deal with other things. Don't open your mouth and make commitments. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Because when you do, the Lord looking for you to do it. And he don't take it lightly. A lot of times it's best just to say, well, I'll see. I don't know. I'm going to try. But be careful. But if you open your mouth and say, I am, I'm going to do, you best do it. So let's take a look at that. Now we're going to take a look at making a vow. Numbers 30. And we're going to pick this up at verse 1. Numbers 30 and 1. Go ahead, brother Israel. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with the bond, 
and he shall not be break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. So if you open your mouth, all that come out of it, you have to do. So be careful. Don't go to my I'm going to do, I'm going to promise, or making vows to God, Lord, well, if you do this, I'm going to do that. Because the Lord is expecting you to do it. And he don't take it lightly, and we're going to see this. Let's go to uh, Psalms 50. Because sometimes we understand that a vow is just an oath. You know, well, you know, the Lord said don't take no oaths. No, the Lord did say don't take no oaths. But we find out that a vow is also a, a personal commitment you can make. Telling somebody, well, I'm going to do this, brother, or I'm going to do this, and then you don't do it. So don't bind yourself to something that you don't want to do. I tell you, a lot of times, I learn a lot of times, I just like to say, well, I'll see. Because I know me, I change my mind in a heartbeat. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I change my mind in a minute. I'd be like, oh, I don't. <laughs> you know? And then if I didn't commit myself, now I can't just go, Pff. I'd be like, dang. Now I got to do it. Don't want to do it, but now I didn't commit myself, now I got to do it. And I don't like that. I really don't. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like doing something when I just don't want to do it because I'd open my mouth and said I'm gonna do it. So I try. To say, I try to just, just really not to say I'm gonna do something. You might think it's, it's weaseling out, whatever. Well, it's weaseling out. I'm gonna weasel out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, Psalms 50. We just want one verse. Verse 14. Psalms 50 and 14. Go ahead. Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. He said, offer unto God thanksgiving, but do what? Pay your vows unto the Most High. Amen. So when you open your mouth and say, I'm going to do, do. Because the Lord here, and a lot of times you make a commitment with somebody, you think it's just between you and that person, but the book tells us, let us know, that no, God is in there. He has something to do with that. You think it's just between me and her. Yeah, sister, mm, but the Lord sitting right there. He got the angel listening and watching. Okay. He might have, he might have, Lord might have set that up. Yeah. Now you're going to renege. Lord ain't pleased. I ain't got it in here, but go look at what Zedekiah did when he made, a, uh, the Lord set up a deal with him and, 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 and Nebuchadnezzar. And Zedekiah reneged on the deal. And watch this what the Lord did to him. You can't do that. Let's go further. <coughs> Let's go to Ecclesiastes 5. So I don't want you to be confused, think that a vow consists of you only making an oath or a promise. There's also a, a vow consists of you making personal commitments. How about I'm going to do? Please ask the fifth chapter, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1. Please ask the 5 and 1. All right, go ahead. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Mm -hmm. For they consider not that they do evil. Mm -hmm. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. You understand what he's telling you here? Don't be rash with your mouth to utter anything before the Lord. The Lord hear you. He got them angels, and they hear you. So don't be rash in making commitments. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or, or making promises. Don't be rash. Let your words be few. And if you commit to something, see it through. Go ahead. Three, for a dream coming through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest to vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. You see that? Book told you don't be rash with your mouth, let your words be few. A fool's voice is known by what? By a multitude of words. And when you vow, vow to God, don't be afraid to pay it because he have no pleasures in fools. Because if I'm telling you something, if you make a commitment or a vow or an oath and you don't see it through, you are a fool because the Lord is watching and he is not going to let you get away. Believe that. You are not going to escape that one. It's all about your words. It's all about your words. People got to be able to depend on your word. 
Your words means a lot. Just like we depend on the Lord's words, the Lord is all about what you say. About your words. A man is judged by his words. Can't nobody believe you, then what good are you? You say something and they can't believe what you're selling them, then what good are you? You finished that up? Um, it's the end of it and ending it. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Mm -hmm. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. So it's better for you just not to even vow. Don't say I'm going to do something. Don't commit. It's best that you don't than to commit and don't do it. Keep going. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Mm -hmm. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Oh, don't be high my will. I made a mistake. Too late. You didn't let it come out your mouth. I don't want to hear that I made a mistake. You better do it. Go ahead. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? Mm -hmm. For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. But fear God. Remember that. Let's go even further. Let's go to Matthew 5. See what Jesus had to say about the matter. I want you to read what forswear means. Forswear, to renounce, I repudiate under oath, to disavow under oath, deny, to swear falsely, mm. commit perjury. So we got to understand what forswear means. Now we're going to pick this up at verse 33, Matthew 5 and 33. Go ahead. Again. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself. In other words, if you made a vow, don't go back on it. Like say perjury, you just swore to something, but now you're going to deny it or lie or go back on it. He said, don't forswear yourself, go ahead. But shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. So Jesus letting you know, don't swear at all. Don't get yourself in trouble. I'm going to tell you what you do. Don't do it at all. Go ahead. Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, nor for, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. That's good right there. As far as I want to go right there. So don't do it. Something you want to do, then do it. But be careful about making personal commitments and making promises. How about, well, I promise this or I promise that. Don't do that. Or taking vows and oaths. The Lord said, don't do it at all. It's best that you don't do it at all. That way you don't get caught up. Because once it come out your mouth, you bound. And you got to do it. And the Lord is not going to give you a pass. So don't do that. Now let's go take a look at something. Like I said, Lord, I always give you examples. We're going to take a look at two examples and we're going to Move on to something else. Let's go to uh, Judges 11. Because that's what these are in here for. The Lord said these things are examples. So we can know what to do and what not to do. So we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. Turn over to Judges 11 chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 29. Judges 11 and 29. Give everybody a second to get there, then you can start. All right, go ahead, Brother Allen. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. So Jephthah is at war with the children of Ammon. And he's going to make, a, he gonna make a, a vow before the Lord. Go ahead. 
And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Amnon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in place in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he smote them from Eroar, even till he came to Mithneth, even twenty cities, unto the plain of the vineyards, with very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. So the Lord delivered the Ammonites unto him a very great slaughter. He slaughtered in twenty cities he destroyed. Go ahead. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Now look what him come out. He done made this vow, and look what comes to greet him. You know this man was broke down. Go ahead, keep reading. And it came to pass when he saw that he rinsed his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. You see what's going on here? This man had made a vow for the Lord, and his daughter come out, and he would opened his mouth, and he can't go back on it. He got to do what he said he was going to do. He got to offer his daughter up. That's why he rinsed his clothes. He said, I don't open my mouth. I can't go back on this. And she the first to come out his door to greet him. His only child. Go ahead. Keep going. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which, ha which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon, and, say, and she said unto her father, Let these things be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellow. So she had asked something else was the Lord, the spirit that the Lord gave his daughter. Hey, you don't open your mouth. You have to do what you're going to say you're going to do. Now, just, I have to ask you one thing. Just let me go up for two months and bewail my virginity. Then I'll come back. Go ahead. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man, and it was custom in Israel. So that brother had to sacrifice his child, but he vowed that vow. He didn't want to. It hurt him. But he had he opened his mouth, and like he said, I can't go back on it now. The Lord delivered him a great, a great slaughter. Twenty cities he destroyed. This is how serious it is about opening your mouth and making a commitment or a vow or a promise. When you open your mouth, you can't go back. You got to see it through. And this man knew he had to see it through, and he saw it through. Finish that up. That the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadites, four days a year. So because of that, they, every year they would lament her. But he had to offer his daughter up. He said he was going to do it, and he had to do it, and he couldn't go back on it. You think he wanted to do that? Man, I got to sacrifice my child. But he opened his mouth. Now we're going to take a look at something else. Let's go now. Let's go to Acts 5. See, we need to understand all these things so we won't be so hasty when we come to open up our mouth. Because the Lord said, I am God and I change not. We're going to turn over now to Acts 5th chapter and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts 5 and 1. All right, go ahead, Brother Allen. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, they was collecting for the poor. And those who had land, some of them were selling land, they do this. But they offered this. They opened their mouth. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to sell my land, I'm going to give the money to, to you for the poor. The man went and sold the land. When he got the money, he decided, well... 
I ain't going to give them all the money. I'm going to keep back some of this money. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you just said that you was going to sell the land and give the money to the poor. Not that you was going to keep back some of the money. Yeah. But let's see what happened then. Keep going. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Yeah, he think he's lying to Peter and them. He said, no, you lying to the Holy Ghost. That angel, I keep telling that angel is there. That spirit is there watching. He heard what the man said. He heard the commitment the man made. I'm going to sell the land, and I'm going to give the money to so you can give to the poor because they was collecting for the poor. He went and sold the land and decided to give only part of the money. Well, he should have said that. He said, I tell you what, I'll sell the land, and I'll keep so much and give you the rest. He would have been okay then. But he said, I'm going to sell the land, I'm going to give you the money for it. Keep going. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart, that thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God? So that's when you be careful. Because sometimes I know we deal with each other, but Lord work through people. And you think you're dealing with another person, but all the time, the Lord is there. You open your mouth, you think you're making this commitment to this person, but you're making this commitment before God. Are you saying whatever you're saying is before God? Yet we see a man standing in front of us or a woman or whatever. But the Lord is there. He got that angel there and he's recording and he's listening. And you making this commitment to them. Go ahead. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Well, the Lord executed judgment on him right then and there. Because he, he made a commitment and he went back on the commitment. He opened his mouth and said, I'm going to do this. But yet he changed his mind and went back on it. Say, hey, you ain't lied to me. You done lied to the Lord. And the Lord brought judgment on him right then and there. Go ahead. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, Mm -hmm. came in. And Peter answered answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah. For so much. And Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband at the door shall and shall carry thee out. And she right there with him. She had made the agreement with him, so now she got the same thing he got. And Peter asked her, see, well, let me see, because he didn't know whether she was in it or not. He asked her, Well, hey, did you sell your uh, sell the land for this much or that much? No, we sold it for this much. Uh, why was you in agreement with your husband to do this wicked thing? Now them that have buried your husband, they finna come and bury you. What happened to her? Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. So be careful on making commitments. Don't be rash with your mouth. The Lord, and guess why we had two examples. Well, what happened? One made a commitment and he had to see it through even if he didn't want to. Another one made a commitment and didn't see it through and the Lord slayed him and his wife on the spot. The Lord might not kill you on the spot, but I tell you what, you ain't going to get by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Believe that. Let's go further. Let's go to Proverbs 17. We'll be out of here on time. Yeah, the Sabbath is long, Diana. Proverbs 17. Let's take a look at some of these wise sayings. And now I just want to look at a few things about the book saying about letting your words be few. Proverbs 17, and we're going to pick this up at verse 27. 17 and 27. All right, go ahead, Brother Allen. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Like you say, he that got knowledge do what? Spareth his words. I told you, I said, the more I understand, the more I realize to keep my mouth quiet. And the same thing with you. The more understanding you get, the more you're going to realize to keep your mouth quiet. He that have understanding spareth his words. Go ahead. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. Ain't that something? Even a fool, if he keep his mouth quiet, he might be considered wise. <laughs> well, don't nobody know he ain't open his mouth, eh? Right, 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 right. 
So who knows if you're a fool or you're a wise man if you keep your mouth quiet? Don't nobody know. You know, they say keep your mouth quiet and don't, and don't, and what's say, uh, don't open your mouth and remove the doubt. You know, when you open your mouth, you remove all doubt. No, well, don't do that then. Keep your mouth quiet. Even, and even if you are a fool, people will think you're wise. Boy, that's a wise person there. You ain't said nothing. <laughs> That's why you wise, because you ain't said nothing. <laughs> Go ahead, finish that. And he that shutteth his lips he is esteemed a man of understanding. Yeah, he that shutteth his lips is esteemed of a man of understanding. Let's look at something else. Let's go even further. Let's go uh, turn over to Proverbs 21. Say we just hit a few scriptures here and there about keeping your words few and, 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 and holding your tongue. Proverbs 21, I just want one verse, 21 and 23. 21 and 23. All right, go ahead. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Oh, you want to keep your soul from trouble? Yeah. Keep your mouth and tongue. It reminded me when I was little, my mama used to always say, don't let your mouth get you in something that your behind can't get you out of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want, you, want, you want to stay out of trouble? Keep your tongue. Because that mouth gets you in a world of trouble. It always gets you in trouble. You think about your life when you're going through. Every time you got into trouble, it was always the mouth. It was always the mouth. Tongue always got you in trouble. When the Lord say, hey, he that keep with his tongue, keep with his soul from trouble. Let's look further. Let's go to Job 6. So we're just going to hit here and there, see what some of these wise men had to say. Job 6, and I just want one verse out of there, verse 24, 6 and 24. <clears throat> All right, go ahead, bro. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have heard. You see what Job said? He said, Teach me, Lord, and I will do what? Hold I will my hold tongue. my tongue. And that's what it's all about. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. I'm not going to let this tongue get me cut off. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to check it. I'm going to bridle this tongue. Let's go even further. Let's go to Proverbs 29. Back to Proverbs. I just want one verse out of there too. 29 and 20. So if you want to be wise, keep quiet. Just that simple. And that's not difficult. Twenty nine and twenty. Go ahead. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than him than mm. with him. You see that? A man that is hasty in words, rash with his words, always quick to open his mouth. The Lord said there's more hope of a fool than of him. Because he can always say something he got no business saying. We read earlier in the multitude of words, one of them not seeing. So there's more hope of a fool than the one that is always hasty with his words, quick to say something. Always got an opinion on everything. Hold your tongue. Show your show, show true wisdom and be quiet. Let's go to Colossians 3. Now, you know, I want to take a look at now something else that I personally want to deal with, and, and that's cursing. Because we ought not to be cursing, plain and simple. Curse words should not come out of our mouth. It is not of God. And if you got a problem with curse words, then I suggest you work on it substitute, dog on it or whatever, dag, whatever you want to say, but don't say nothing. But that's something that should not come forth out of our mouth. I don't like it. When I hear it, it stings and burns my ears, and that's the truth. And when I hear it from brothers, it hurts. And the book, it do not agree with it. Colossians 3, we're going to pick this up at verse 5. 3, and five. Go ahead, Brother Allen. 
Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which ye is idolatry. Mm -hmm. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Wait a minute. He said, now nah, which you put away, we supposed to put these things away now. You didn't put away anger, you didn't put away wrath, malice, which is hatred, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Right, we're going to read something here. Let me find it real quick. I'm going to read, a f I got a few things I want to read here. But we're going to start off with something. Um, hold on one minute. Read what filthy communication means. Filthy, contemptible, offensive, vile. Or objectionable, vile, vulgar, obscene, filthy language. Filthy what? Filthy language. Okay. I want you to read what blasphemy means. Impious utterance or action concerning God are sacred things. A crime of assuming to oneself the rights or qualities of God. Mm -hmm. Irre irreverent, irreverent behavior toward anything held sacred. Mm -hmm. Profanity. Cursing, wait a minute, swearing. wait a minute, wait a minute. Blasphemy covers what? Profanity, cursing, swearing, oh. sacrilege, impiety. Blasphemy also covers cursing and profanity. You understand that? <laughs> and we know one thing. No blasphemous person is going to get into the kingdom. Blasphemy covers these things. That's why I, I read stuff and that's why I go look stuff up. So I can understand. Now I want you to read profanity. This is I wrote that down. Profanity, the quality of being profane, irre irreverence, profane conduct or language, a profane act or utterance. Profane conduct or what? Language. Uh, okay, go ahead. A profane act or utterance, obscenity, blasphemy, sacrilege, swearing, oh. malediction, curse, cursing, a profane oath, curse word to swear at. To mm. blaspheme, to swear profanely. Mm. Something else, hold on. Something else I want to read here. Let me find it real quick. I also want you to read corrupt. Read that. Then we're going to go back to the scriptures. Corrupt, guilty of being di of dishonest practice or bribery, lacking integrity, crooked, debased in character, depraved, perverted, mm -hmm. perverted, wicked, mm -hmm. evil, to low, lower morally, pervert, to alert, to alter a language, text, etc. for the worse, debased. Now, that's what I really wanted. Corrupt also covers to alter a language... For the worse, to debase. This is what curse words do. Curse words alters a language for the worse. It debases a language. And I don't care what language you speak, all languages has curse words. We should not be cursing. Words like that should not come out of our mouth. It covers blasphemy. Keep that in mind. Maybe if you remember, that's blasphemy, you might work on it and get it out your mouth. Because one thing we know, no blasphemous person is getting into the kingdom. I told you this tongue is dangerous. That's why we start off in James when he said that tongue is a world of fire unto itself. It's the smallest member you got, but it's the most dangerous member you got. Now, where we at? Uh, starting nine. Go ahead. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Now turn over to Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4, chapter. Ephesians 1, 4. 4. Ephesians 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 29. I mean 20. Ephesians 4 and 20. Okay, go ahead, brother. 
but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, mm -hmm. that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now we read here, he said you put off the convers former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And I know you brothers going to come to me and say, well, see, Brother Zach, he talking about your lifestyle right there. And he is. Well, let me ask you this. Do not your conversation mirror your lifestyle? Do not the adulterer and fornicator, that ain't that's what his conversation consists of? Fornication and adultery? Do not the thief, ain't that's what his conversation consists of? Yes, sir. Even a violent man, even his conversation is violent. And we are children of light. Our conversation should be that of light. Your conversation mirrors your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness mm -hmm. and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Mm -hmm. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's because you start getting into vengeful things then. Go ahead. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Once again, that's why I read the definition of corrupt. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt. To alter a language, to debase, for the worse. That's cursing. Filthy communication. Don't let it come out your mouth. That's blasphemous. Go ahead. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, how is that ministering grace unto the hearers if you cuss them? Mm. Let us reason one with another. If I'm cursing and then I turn around and try to preach to you, are you going to hear what I got to say? No. no. And don't tell me, say, well, brother, you know what? I'm careful about who I talk around or what I say. Well, you know what? If cursing is part of your general conversation, it's going to come out. I don't care who you're around. And don't think people don't watch you. You being watched. I'm telling you, you being watched. Don't think they don't watch you on the job or whatever. Wherever you at, don't think you ain't being watched. They sit back, yeah, that's so and so how about the Lord, but every time he opens his mouth, he curses. Mm -hmm. You being watched. And not only that, you being being watched by God. Amen. But I'm telling you, people are watching you. You might not think they aren't, but they are. And you might not bring the word to them. You might say, you don't have to be on your job talking word, 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 just your conversation. Certain conversations you can be partake in, certain conversations you can't. When I sit in, sitting in the lunchroom, and they get in the lunchroom, and they get to talking certain conversations, I shut up. I couldn't be a part of it. Especially Israel men, because all they like to do is talk fornication and hoarder. So I just shut my mouth. And I wasn't around there preaching to nobody. But I'm going to tell you something. Brother came to me one time. He said, man, I know you're different. He said, you don't curse. You don't do this. You don't do that. But I ain't preaching to nobody. But he knew I was different by my conversation, what he heard and didn't hear. That's how he knew I was different. And that's how people going to know you're different. It ain't about you got to be around there, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. They watching you. They listening to what's coming out your mouth. Even in general conversation, they are listening to what's coming out your mouth. Then when the opportunity comes, you're going to speak the word. If you got a history of cursing and they've been hearing you curse, they don't want to hear you. Did we finish that? Um, starting 30. We that's No, that's good. Now. That's good. Something else I want to speak about. This is my personal pet peeve. And it really is. I'm going to take a page from Paul and want you all to bear with me for one minute. But I'm speaking on this as one who's trying to do what's right from a godly sense. And I'm talking about this N-word. I hate it. Can't stand it. And I feel we that's something else that shouldn't be coming out of our mouth. Read the definition on it. Nigger. 
The term nigger is now probably the most offensive word in, the en in English. Its degree of offensiveness has increased markedly in recent years, although it has been used in a derogatory manner since at least the Revolutionary War. Definitions 1A, 1B, and 2 represents man mean meanness that are deeply despairing and are used when the speaker deliberately wishes to cause great offense. Oh, so it's used when someone wishes to call what? Great, great offense. offense. Go ahead. Definition 1A. However, it's sometimes used among African Americans in a neutral or familiar way. Definition 3 is not normally considered despairing, as in the Irish are niggers of Europe mm -hmm. from Roddy Doyle's The Comments. So everything they're saying now, how you know, how we use the word, it's supposed to be an endearing word, but it's a negative, despairing word, and it can never be enduring. It can never be positive. Never. Go ahead. The Commitments. But the other uses are considered contemptuous and hostile. Noun, slain, extremely despair, disparaging and offensive. A black person, a member of any dark-skinned people, slain, extremely disparaging or offensive. A person of any race or origin regarded as contemptible, inferior, ignorant, etc. A victim of prejudice similar to that suffered by blacks. A person who is economically, politically, or socially disenfranchised. Is there anything you heard in here that's positive? Anything that's positive with that word. So then why we use it? And I know you say, well, Brother Zach, the Lord said we're going to be called a bad word in the proverb. And you're right. But he never read, I never read what he said. It have to come out of my mouth. It's a negative word. There's nothing positive about it. We should not sound like the brothers on the corner. You know, if I went out of here and if I just picked 10 people at random and sat down and had a conversation with them for about an hour, at the end of that hour, I could tell you who's educated and who's not. Don't know them, never met them. Well, then it should be like that with us. We're supposed to be children of light. Person should be able to sit down and hear our conversation, and even though we never say the Lord not one time, they should come out there and know, hey, that brother is different, or that sister is different. We should not sound like the brother on the corner. I have a problem with the word. And like I said, this is my personal pet peeve. I don't use it, I have a problem with it. And for me, this goes back to when I was in the military 30 some years ago. When I went into service and I was off the street and the brother said, man, we don't use that in here. We don't call each other by that word. Now, I'm in the word of God. Why should I use it? Why should I refer to any of you with that? That's a negative word. If someone from another ethnic group or race called you that, you want to fight. Mm -hmm. If you went on your job and they called you that, you'll get a lawyer. How am I suing? <laughs> So it's the same word, so why should it be any different if it were coming out of your mouth? It's not a negative word. That's all I got to say on that. Let's go further. That's my own personal pet peeve. Now we're going to get back to the word. Let's go to St. Matthew 12. We ain't got much more. We just deal with a few more things and we out of here. I said we're going to get out of here on time. St. Matthew 12, we're going to pick this up at verse 31. 12 and 31. All right, go ahead. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. Mm-hmm. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. One or the other. Make the tree good and his fruit good, or corrupt one or the other. You got to be one or the other. There's no middle ground. You can't strive. You can't be both. Like the book said in the beginning, both salt water and fresh water can't come from the same fountain. That's right. Both cursing and blessing can't come from the same mouth. It's one or the other. Read that next verse. O generation of vipers, 
How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Wait a minute. He said out of the abundance of the heart. What speaketh? The mouth speaketh. I want to hold you. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. I want to show you something real quick. Out of the abundance of the heart. He's talking about the mind. Because it got to come up here first before it come out your mouth. But I want to turn over to 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 10. And we're going to pick this up at verse 3. <coughs> I want you to keep that in mind. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. All right, go ahead, Brother Allen. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wed war after the flesh. We sure enough don't. Go for, ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strong of strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down imaginations and every high place, every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every, th every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do you see that? He bringing into captivity every, every thought. thought into the obedience of Christ. If you can bring every thought into the obedience of Christ, you don't have to worry about what come out of this mouth. Because the book just say, out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaketh. This is your objective. This is what you're striving for, to bring into captivity. Every thought you got is some subjection to Jesus. If you can get there, you won't have no concern about what come out of this mouth. Because what come out of the mouth is going to be in subjection to Jesus too, if the thoughts are. Every thought. That's some work there, ain't it? But that's what we, this is give us something to strive for. I ain't nowhere near that. But boy, I'm trying to work and get there. Every thought. Because like the book say, our warfare is not, this is not a fleshly warfare that we, we got. This thing is spiritual. Your thoughts, they are spiritual. This warfare we're dealing with, because that's where the war is at here. That's why you, that's what you got to strive for, to bring every thought. Because if you can get every thought in subjection to Christ, you, gonna, you all right. You're going to get there. Because out of the buttons of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it come here first, before you say it or before you do it, it's here. So if you can get every thought in subjection to Christ, then the things you say and do is going to be under subjection to Christ. And it's going to be pleasing to the Lord. Let's go further. Let's go to Psalms 35. Now we're going to take a look at a few things that, that should come out of our mouth, some good words to speak and say. Psalms 35, we're going to pick this up at verse 27. Okay, go ahead, brother. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteousness. Cause, yeah. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Mm -hmm. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. You see that? Let your tongue speak of his righteousness and his praise all the day long. This is what we're trying to get to. You know, I, like I say, I'm like anybody, I don't speak to the Lord 24-7. But one thing I do try and do, whatever conversation I partake in, I try to make sure I don't cross the line. And like I say, in some conversations, you just can't be a part of. Some things you just have to, you can't take part in. But whatever conversation, because I like talking politics and other things. I like having fun and joking, which I got to be careful with that, because the book tells you about foolish gesturing. Yes, sir. Because that can get off into hurting people. You hurt people making jokes and fun, you get off into that. book teach you about that, too. But whatever part of the conversation I be, I get into be a sports or politics or whatever, I try to make sure I don't cross the line. And that's what we have to do. Let's go further. Let's look at some more. Let's go to uh, turn over to Psalms 37. It's right there. and Pick it up at verse 29. Go ahead, 37 to 29. Just some of the things the book tells us that we should do or that we should be saying or says should come forth out of our mouth. 
37 and 29. Go ahead, brother. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The mouth of the righteous speak mm -hmm. wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgments. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Okay, hold on right there. Your verse right now. Uh, 31, just read, read 31, that's good. But he said, the mouth of the righteous speak of wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is what? Is in, in his, his heart, tongue. and none of his steps shall slide. Because if you're talking the Lord's law and judgment, then you're going to be all right. Your step says it's not going to slide. You ain't going to fall. This is what's supposed to be in your heart. Remember, the, after the mouth to the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if God's law is here, then it's going to come out here. And judgment going to come out here. Let's look, at, let's look even further. Turn over to Psalms 119. We ain't got too much more. We'll be out here in a few minutes. Psalms 119. And pick it up at verse 169. Let me get that thing. 119 and verse 169. Psalms 119 and 169. Give everybody a second to get there. Okay, go ahead, brother. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Mm -hmm. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statue. Mm -hmm. statue. Say, my lips gonna utter praise when you have taught me thy statutes. Go ahead. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. And that's what our tongue is supposed to speak of, his words. Give him praise, and our tongue is supposed to speak of his words, because all his commandments are righteous. Go ahead. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is and thy law is my delight. And that's what we got to get to, where the Lord's law is our delight. And that's a beautiful thing when God's law is your delight, and you delight in his law. That's a, that's a good place to be. Go ahead. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee. And let thy judgments help me. That's good right there. Let's go to Joshua now. Just running here and there. We, we getting close. Turn to the book of Joshua. First chapter. And I want one verse. Verse 8. Joshua 1 and verse 8. Let's see what Joshua had to say about the matter. Wait a minute. No, that's wrong. Something was wrong. All right, go ahead, brother. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Wait a minute. See what Josh what you say? He said, This book of the law shall what? Shall not, not depart out of thy mouth. Go ahead. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So the book of the law shall not leave your mouth. He said you shall meditate in it day and night. Let's strive to do that. Meditate in this book day and night. Meditate in that law day and night. And then you're going to make your way prosperous. And this is not talking about necessarily financially prosperous, but you will get into the kingdom because that's the prosperity that you were looking for everlasting life but if you meditate on this law day and night then that's also doing what you bringing every thought and subjection to Christ and if this law never leaves your mouth then you in good shape because that's what we are striving for let's go even further let's go to Proverbs 18 we got three more after that and we out of here That's why the Lord tell you to do them things and meditate on his law day and night because he know how this journey is. He know, man, you know, we are forgetful. 
and we don't constantly work on this and meditate on this and keep this before us, we'll forget this. And we'll be off into doing something else. So we have to constantly be into this. We have to constantly work on this. We have to constantly read this, study this, keep that law in our head. You have to do this constantly. I told you it takes all that you got and then some. So you have to work at it. Say Proverbs 18 and verse 20. Go ahead. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And with the increase of his lips shall he be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. There you go. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it are going to eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. If you love life, your tongue is going to get you that. If you love death, tongue. your tongue is going to get you that. The book says, in the power of the tongue, whichever one you love, the tongue is going to get you. Be it life or be it death. But the mouth is going to get you that, one or the other. Let's go to St. Matthew 5. So you decide which one you love. Five and 37. I just want that one verse. Two more after this and we out of here. 5 and 37. Go ahead. But let your communication be, yea, yea, or nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So let your communication be yes or no. What's the more is more than this? Cometh of evil. That's what Jesus tell you now. One or the other, yes or no. More than that, you're stepping on slippery ground. If you keep that in mind. Turn over to Matthew 12. 12 and verse 35. 12 and verse 35. Okay, go ahead, Brother Allen. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. See that? Out of the evil of his heart. Because the book says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth evil things. It's coming forth out of your mouth. Go ahead. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak. Wait a minute. He said every. And in this, in this sense, idle means careless. Because I looked it up. Every careless word that you speak. Go ahead. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You're going to answer. Every careless word that come out your mouth, you're going to answer for. Every. That covers, man. That's absolute, ain't it? So be careful what you open your mouth and say, because you're going to give account thereof. Them words ain't just go out and fall to the ground and that's it. No, you're going to give account thereof. Finish that. For by, the, for by thy words thou shalt be justified. Wait a minute. By your words you're going to be what? Justified. You're going to be justified. Go ahead. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. But by your words you're going to be condemned. You decide which one is going to be. One more last scripture and we out of here. Malachi 3 and 16. Malachi 3 and verse 16. Go ahead, Brother Allen. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance that was written before him he for knows them. That? He said, Lord said, those that feared the Lord said, they spoke often one to another, speaking about the Lord, meditating in his law day and night, letting his law come out of their mouth. Speaking of judgment and of righteousness, what did the Lord do for them? Go ahead. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. He said to fear the Lord and thought upon his name. Go ahead. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. He said these going to be mine. In the day when I make up my jewels, these are going to be mine. Go ahead. 
and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. That's good. So that's it. I hope we got some kind of understanding out of this. I'm glad y'all bear with me, and thank you for your time.